Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Catacombs, which is a disc flicking dungeon crawl, which I'm going to be doing a run through today, at the request of one of my Kickstarter backers, Leon Schoiber. Leon, I hope you enjoy this run through as we delve the depths of these catacombs. And I am not alone today. I am joined by my lovely wife, Jennifer Ann. Hello. Who says hello. And Jen is just now getting over the, her flu that's been ravaging both of us for over a month now. And so I think Jen's going to be doing a little bit of quiet talking today. <laughs> she literally lost her voice for over a week. And it's pretty much back now, but we don't want to push it too hard. So uh, anyway, Jen, in spite of her hardships, has joined us today. And she will be playing the role of the heroes in our dungeon adventure today. So that means Jen will be controlling Elani, the thief, uh, Zorik, the barbarian, uh, Olira, the elf, and Varesh, the wizard. To, in this game, she will not be playing Roostar, the chicken hero, I don't know, or I can't remember his name, but the skeleton hero. The base game comes with six heroes. Every time there's going to be four of these heroes who get together, they all have different strengths and weaknesses, and they're going to be going through multiple levels of a dungeon trying to get to the big boss, which in this game is going to be Fosshar, the dragon. See, he's quite scary looking. Rawr. Although it could have been the, uh, the Lich King guy and what else is there there's also or are they i can't find them amongst all these many many tokens over here i'm completely blind it's just completely just, oh yeah the medusa or the sorcerer so there's four different bosses the base game comes with we're going up against the dragon although jen's got a lot of dungeon rooms to go through before we get there now i should say i'm only gonna be doing a run through with just the base game the game has two very neat expansions i'll talk about those a bit in the final thoughts but we're ready to go. I am the evil dungeon lord. Jen is the stalwart group of heroes. And we already have our first room set up. And now, the dungeon itself was chosen randomly from a level 0, a level 1, and then a rest stop. And then another level 1, another level 1, another rest stop room, a level 2, and then the final. And we go through these rooms in order. You know, they are taken from a big deck of potential rooms. And so our first room is going to be... Zotha's Gatehouse, where Jen is going to go up against three zombies, a skeleton warrior, and a mercenary. This question mark means that this particular character is based on what the boss is. The Phosphar, the dragon boss, the mercenary are these fire sprites. So, I have to put my guys out first, and they go on this side of the, of the line. All my guys start over here. Jen's guys and girls start over here on, the, on this side of this line. So what was it? It was three zombies, boppity boppity bop, and a, a skeleton, and one of these firearms. Now, I gotta pull out the cards for all these characters. Let's see, uh, I'm looking at all the high level ones. Where are the low level ones? They're at the other end of the deck, of course. I'm on the far end of the deck. But you can see, there's a whole bunch of monsters that come with this game. A crazy amount of monsters. And, of course, all right, there's the fire spirit. And a blood skull, sewer rat, skeleton warrior, zombie. Okay. So these are the three creatures who Jen will be fighting against. They all have different powers. The zombie can move and can or you know can do a, a melee attack and then can move and stun. That's what this blue symbol means. The skeleton warrior, he's pretty straightforward. He can just do a melee attack. Nothing special there. The fire spirit is kind of unique. That can do a melee attack and then or you can do a melee attack or can do a special melee attack. This purple means transform. And what happens is the fire spirit, so I can attack the fire spirit or I can attack this fire spirit and transform, which means the fire spirit becomes a fire wall that blocks Jen's movement and potentially hurts her if she ever runs into the firewall. So anyway, so those are my characters and I've got to put them on my side of the board. And Jen is going to get first dibs on the flicking. So I've got to put these, I, you know, and there's all these kind of walls. So I think I'm going to hide my guys sort of behind the wall so it's tough for Jen to hit my guys. But I don't want to make them, you know, hidden so well. I'll, I'll put this zombie out here. No, the zombies are tougher than that. Put the skeleton warrior out here. He's kind of exposed. Jen could take a long shot and go for him, but all my other guys are safe behind the walls. So I've set my side up. Now Jen is going to set her side up as best she can. And so she's putting her thief kind of behind that wall. Now Jen's got to go first, so she's got to make the opening salvos. So that's something she wants to bear in mind as she sets up. 
right? Her Barbarian, her toughest guy with 12 hit points. The Wizard is the most powerful, but the weakest at only 8 hit points. You can see all that stuff is tracked over there. Let's see, and, uh, and yeah, the Familiar for the Elf Princess has to go within an inch of the Familiar. Okay, so that's Jen. She's got her Wizard, her Barbarian, her Thief, and her Elf, and uh, the Elf has the spirit familiar. You can see all of Jen's car character boards over there keeps track of her hit points and all the special powers they've got. Okay, so we are ready to go. Let the battle begin. Jen, the heroes always go first. So Jen is gonna flick each of these five characters. And what she's trying to do is, I mean, all of my guys, I think every single one of them has only one hit point. So if she can hit any of them, they're just instantly dead and Jen earns money that she can spend in the shop over here uh, a little bit later in the game to get you know new equipment and whatnot that she can buy in the shop. And, uh, but she also has other stuff. The, the thief is special in that whenever the thief hits one of my guys or kills a guy, she gets two gold or gets an extra gold the Barbarian has more hit points and also has two battle axes that can make him incredibly powerful. He only gets to use it twice in the entire adventure. The Elf has the Spirit Familiar, who is basically kind of like a defensive character who can, you know, um, you know, protect her and stuff like that. And she can just do regular attacks, but she also has a bow, which she can use twice in this room to shoot at me from a distance. The wizard can do a melee attack, also has a fireball that can only be used once in this room, and then the wizard has a whole big stack of spells. Each one of those spells can only be used once in the entire game. So Jen's got to use them at the right time, her healing, her anti-potion, her additional fireballs, her, her um, you know, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, so Jen has rearranged a little bit, and now she's ready to go. Are you ready to start flicking honey pie? I, I think so. But all my, right. My plan is to... to You're going to go that? right for your barbarian ba battle axe? You only got two of them for the whole game. I know, but then I can take out all these guys. Yep, but, um, well, first of all, before I think we should do anything, Jen and I, we haven't played this game for a couple of weeks, so why don't you take a couple of practice flicks first? Okay. Because, it, you know, we need a couple of practice flicks. So okay. take a practice flick or two to see how well you're going to do with that. So, yes, yeah, I mean, so that means you're not smack dab in the middle. Nope. Um, so, yeah, see if you're, how comfortable you are with making a long distance shot like that to get amongst all my guys to use your Berserker Axe. So... See, that's what I'm saying. I, I've hit myself. It's going to be tough to get in there. Um, you don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> and she's actually destroying the walls of this dungeon. Okay, I think that's enough practice, by the way. All right. Okay, that was enough practice. Yeah, all right. So there we go. We're reset up. Practice time is over. And now, are you sure you want to go right into the Berserker Battle Action? I mean, you really want to do that once you're surrounded by a bunch of guys. Uh, that'd be tough, but it's her choice. So let's just go on again, put in a situation here and see how is Jen gonna shoot. And, and Jen's gonna do all four of her guys here. Actually, maybe we have to come over this way. All right, so go ahead, honey. Take your best shot. Okay. All right, and I was too busy looking at the camera. I didn't, what'd you just do? I just took your skeleton out. All right, so she just took out my skeleton. Now, Jen, she went off the edge of the board, so she just puts herself back wherever she went off. And she takes a skeleton and puts it on her character board because that keeps track of the creature she's killed. So, the Barbarian is done because he just did a regular shot. Now, you got your other guys. Yeah. Um, yeah are I, they going to fight? No, I can do four. Uh, no, no, no. You had to declare what you were doing. You had, I mean, in a future turn you can use this. This turn you used your, your regular power. In a future turn you can use that special power. Uh, the Barbarian is done. Now, it is time for one of your other heroes or your familiar to get into the thick of it. And in the meantime, this Barbarian's in trouble because there are a whole bunch of zombies who are going to work him over unless you can do something to save him because you've just gone you know right into the the, the lion's den yeah well, i thought that's what i was doing i thought i told you i was going to do the fourth thing okay all right if you're saying i mean you, you really all right you talked about it, i know all right so you are doing it so jen so you've already done the first of your four chain attacks you have three more chain attacks you can do and now um and then this will be out of the game because it's a one-time thing that's what this symbol means here you can only use it once the entire game so you've got three more okay. and so keep on doing some damage after she moves the box and all that okay so here we go all right so that's a uh, second kill third kill all right, and um, one more shot. Now, this one is... Uh, they all have one hit point. This is the one that if I hit you, I can basically convert it into a, what do you call it, a, uh, you know, a, um, a firewall. 
And this guy, his special thing is, after he does a melee attack, he can move, which can stun a character. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. All right. Thing. Oh! oh. All right. Oh. Ah, so <laughs> <laughs> you had a whole bunch of practice shots. I know, but that, it's just, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what was it, could you say that for the camera again? <laughs> I'm sick. All right, we'll let it go. Okay, well, that was like a, a premature flickeration. Yes, all right. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, so so Jen, in one move, using her, and actually the nice thing is the barbarian can't really be hit by my zombie who's still around. So, now the first room is a level zero room. I don't really have much attention. I should say, this is a war of attrition. My characters, relative to Jen's characters, are very weak. It's in every room. I just want to try and work them down as they just plow through all the rooms. But anyway, so that was Jen. She's still got a bunch more stuff she can do. If she can, she could take out this um, zombie if she can get into position before I ever get a chance to do anything. She could do that by, you know, if she used one of her arrows, the elf could move. You know, try to move over here and then shoot an arrow. You know, that would be an option. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, and that's, in fact, exactly what she's going to do. So you are using one of your two abilities. So these can only be used once per room because they are an ability. Yep. So you're using that. And, um, oh, wow. Okay. And so now she gets to do a ranged attack, which means she takes one of the little arrows. She has to put it within one inch of herself, anywhere she wants. And then she will. All right. And that's it. Just like that. Boom. All right, this first room did not do very well. The heroes are quite triumphant. I didn't even get a chance. Although, you know, that was a big win for Jen, but she threw away. She only has one Berserker Battle Axe left. This is an incredibly powerful thing. Ten bucks. She might regret not having this when she gets in to the Dragon's Lair. As a matter of fact, I guarantee she's going to regret it. Because she could have worked through all those guys without wasting the most powerful weapon in the game. But, you know, she went for it. She uh, is free and clear. And so, this first room is done, just like that. All right, well, that was a bit quicker than I thought. So, everybody is out. We now have to set up the next room. Oh, and um, so the guys you killed, you just go on ahead and return them to me. And you, each one of them, I think each one of them, yeah, was worth one buck. Okay. So, I didn't even get a chance to use any of these guys. That was, ouch. All right, so all these guys come back to me. And we're now going to move on to room number two, which is um, the barracks, where Jen is going up against four orcs, a troll, and a pit viper, a snake, which is very, very scary because it can poison Jen. So if Jen could find the orc, right, so I've got orcs, and I've got troll, it's a, it's a big blue guy, and the snake, if she can find it somewhere in there. It's one of those cards. There are many, many cards. Um, there, you just passed it. All right, a Pit Viper, there we go. So that Pit Viper is a level two. So the Orcs are still level ones, but the Troll and the Pit Viper are level twos, which means they have two hit points each. So Jen has to hit these guys twice, um, and but taking them out is worth two bucks instead of one. Whereas the Orc, he's still a normal guy. So um, that's what is in here for the second room. And now I've got to deploy them. Although we need to set up another room. Uh, da, 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 da. So basically, uh, the game comes with these. These are two-sided. Let's use a different room. Let's go on ahead and say it's in this space, just so we can get a different layout. All right. So it's this uh, little kind of chamber here. Although, actually, I think, yeah, no, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. So Jen's going to relay out the walls. And here's Jen's starting area. She's just moved into this room. And this is some kind of weird altar we've got here at the barracks. And so now I've got to lay my guys out. I have four troll or four orcs and one troll. Oh, so many. You look at all these guys. Here he is. And one nasty, little tiny, very, very tough to hit snake. Uh, and, you know, which is a tough little thing. It has two hit points. So she hits it once, it flips, it's still around. And this snake can poison Jen. Um, you know, can move and then do a melee strike for poison, or can just stay where it is and spit, spit poison and do a ranged attack. And it's very, very tiny, so tough to hit from a distance. The troll is a regenerator. It just does a melee attack, but every time it hits a bad guy, or hits a, I'm sorry, a good guy, to me they're bad guys, it heals itself by one and does one point damage. You know, it, you know, it, it transfers the damage. And the orc has a choice. It can just do a regular melee attack, or it can do a ranged attack. 
So, and now I gotta lay these guys out again. I gotta put them on somewhere on this side of the line. Uh, do I put them here? I mean, I could like say, oh, they're all kind of around the big old campfire doing their thing to summon the troll. And meanwhile, there's a snake off. You know, I, I could set this up however I want, strategically or thematically. Um, you know, or I could just go ahead and just toss them down randomly. Because uh, you can see, Jen's gonna have to go first. And, um, you know, she's got all this wall to get through to get to me. And I want to position myself. So if she moves in here, then I could kind of shoot in to where she is. Let's see. I go for something like that, and maybe that, and that, and the snake. I'm not really worried about getting it. Oh, yeah. And in fact, I'll even put the snake here, kind of in the center, just ready to strike in various directions. Okay. So I'm set up, and now Jen, she arrives. So she's going to put her own guys down. All right. The elf with her guardian. And, uh,. I don't know if she's really going to talk much to explain what she's thinking. Oh. No, um. apparently she's not. <laughs> she's just going to sit in silence <laughs> while we all just stare intently, decide, wondering what it is she's going to do. All right. <laughs> well, it actually behooves me to draw you through and not go into the circle first. All right. Yeah, well, that would certainly be a behoovishness thing to do. All right, so you're laid out. All right. The uh, barracks. We are ready to go. And Jen has to shoot all of her guys and then I counterattack. And this time, I think I'm gonna get a chance to counterattack, which will be nice. So, let's go for it, honey. And take your best shot. What? All right, so, wow, okay. So, did you hit this guy and this guy? Yeah. That's redonkulous. Okay, so it's interesting. Um, it, you know, so Jen has hit both of these. This guy's taken a point of damage, so he's flipped. And this guy, is um you know uh all right do the do orcs no they only have one hit point right yes they only have one hit point so jen's just killed this orc wow okay but the snake still has another hit point and um oh my gosh i can't believe that i didn't think well all right so she's still got a few more shots to take now i can i do another arrow um no you, you're done you when you make your move you have to say are you doing a regular attack since you didn't say anything i'm assuming you did your regular attack Instead of using your elven arrow to move, which doesn't hurt me, and then do oh, a okay. shot. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Did, were you just moving and then you were planning on doing a shot instead? You really have to declare that before okay. you move. Okay, I should have declared, but All right. I didn't, obviously, so we'll okay. go on ahead. Um, let's see. So this is my little guy that's supposed to protect me. Yes, here. that guy cannot good. hurt anybody, but he can basically push stuff around. You can position him if you um, shoot well, so that he's between you know your characters and you know and, and kind of it's all, all defense. Also, your little guy, this symbol here on your card means he is immune to ranged attacks. He cannot be hurt by because he only has one hit point, but he can't be hurt by ranged attack or fire attacks from me. This is the immune box, and all he can do is move. All right. Okay. Jen's deep in thought. I'm deep in thought. Because I'm she knows how to make a good video just by staring in <laughs> silence while the rest of us just wonder what she's going to do. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I brought the phlegm up. All right. <laughs> That's my special power today. Now, the interesting thing about this game is this is actually, in spite of what you might be seeing right now, a very, very quick playing game. People just tend to flick, flick, flick. Unless you're Jen, at which point every move is life or death. All right, so the barbarian's done. Uh, oh. The, uh, right, so it just kind of moves back to wear off screen. And so Jen's just getting her other characters into position. The thief, uh, if you can get a kill, can get two points of damage, or two um, gold instead of one. Hmm, that's right, I forgot about that. But and? We're just gonna, oh, All right, okay. um, all right so I'm that was a particularly that. exciting shot, and here comes the wizard. All right. all right, so they did nothing. Yay, I get to take a turn now. I'm very excited about that. And, um, right, you, you're saying you, I, well, that's okay, I, I can, I can shoot one too. Right, so I'm getting up, and let's see. So Jen has not really given me very many good opportunities, although she did give me one. I think, now this snake can either move and then do a melee strike, although it's already, you know, so I, but I think I'm, I'll, right, and I have to do this. I have to move, if I choose this, I must move and then do a melee strike. Or alternatively, I can do a range strike, which, since I don't want to move because I don't want to move farther away and miss this, I'm just going to go ahead and have the snake spit at Jen. So I'm going to take this, it has to go within one inch, and now, I remember, I haven't done any uh, <laughs> practices. All right, so there we go. 
So I hit Jen, and um, that was a poison strike. Jen must draw one poison card. So go over to the poison deck, and it is a two. Now, this comes over here into the elf's, or the poison area. And so the elf started with, what is it? Um, I can't see it, eight hit points. If the elf ever gets eight points of poison, she instantly dies. Um, now, she also took one point of damage, and that was it for my snake. All right, so the snake has taken his shot, and um, and he's still in a pretty good, so he's safe from everything else, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, um, the elf is just sitting there, so I think we're gonna do a little bit more because I can't really get to any of Jen's other characters. So let's have this guy take a shot. All right, so that's another point of damage to the elf, and now this orc is done. Uh, let's see here, now, all right, so these guys, I need to get them into position to be able to do something. But this guy, if I move him out, he only has one hit point, so he won't stick around for long. This guy, the elf's probably just gonna return favor and kill this guy next turn, so I might as well say goodbye to him. Although, actually, not entirely. I could use the troll, and if I can hit the elf and knock her away, I might save that orc. So let's go for this. All right, so that was all a bunch of stuff. Everybody moved off. This guy, she came in over here, and she just took another point of damage. And now remember, the troll is regenerating, so if the troll had taken any damage, he would heal now, but he hasn't been hurt yet. And unfortunately, so, well that's actually really interesting. This is gonna be a tough shot for Jen. She'll have to move her guardian out of the way to get her thumb into position so that she could shoot that guy. But this guy is protecting this guy, so I'm pretty happy with that. So these have all gone. These two guys have yet to go. Let's see here. Can I get a shot? to get that elf again. You took another point of damage from the elf, right? Yep. So the elf's in trouble. Went from eight to five points of damage and is poisoned. Um, but, you know, the uh, wizard has, well, he can only heal himself, but he does have anti-poison. But, um, right, so. See, I, I don't think I've got a line of sight to that elf. So, I'm just gonna have to try and position this orc for a good next turn. Unless I wanna try and do something crazy like ricochet off that wall. But, yeah, that's crazy. I'm not gonna be able to pull that out. Hmm, so I think I'll just go on ahead and just try to put him into a good central spot where he's in a position to counter, uh, counter attack. That's pretty good, okay. And now my last orc, let's do the same for him, just get him into a good hidey hole. Or how about right in the middle? Um, okay, so that was it. I've taken my shots, right, all, all my guys. And so now it's Jen's turn again. Okay. She is back up. She can do her guys in any order. Now, of course, if we were playing with more players, um, players would split control. I mean, a five-player game, it's one player versus four individual heroes, but Jen's controlling all the heroes right now. So what are you doing, Honey Pie? And don't forget to declare what you're doing before yeah. you actually go ahead and do it. Well, I'm going to do an Elven Arrow. Right, so you're going to do an Elven Arrow, which means you move and then you shoot. Do I have to move You now? have to move. You are required. Same way my um, Pit Viper would have been required to move first. So, but I mean, you could just do a little baby flick that barely, I mean, it's just you have to move. Um, so she's going for the move. All right, so that was your move, and now you're shooting your arrow. Put your arrow within one inch and take your shot. Now, you don't have to be in front like that. You could put it a little bit off. Oh, you're going for that orc. Okay. Hmm. And this is one of Jen's two arrows she gets to use in this room. And then they'll reset again for the next room. So she's, uh, I mean, this is a total no-brainer, honey. You've totally got that. I know, but if I, then I can probably get that one with this one. Ah, uh, yes, you do. I mean, it's a real shame to have your thief back there and not get any kills because you get make more money. Mm hmm So, I'd so, like okay, to. Okay, so you're going for that tough. But yeah, that's going to be a little bit easier, I think, if you move your arrow a little bit over to the side so you're not kind of shooting over the elf. Well, maybe I want to try for the troll. That's a tough shot. Now, but if, if possible, if Jen could, and you know, this is a really expert thing, hit the troll and then ricochet back, she could potentially hit two guys with one shot. Now, one thing is, if she hit the orc with such force that the orc got pushed into the troll, the troll would not take damage. Uh, villains don't damage each other. But if Jen could hit the troll, I mean, that would be kind of interesting. Let's see what Jen's gonna do here. I'm very excited. We might have to go for an instant replay on this. Or she could miss both of them because she got a little too carried away. Do you think it hit it on the way over? Honey, I'm pretty sure. We can check the slow-mo later, but I don't think, I don't, I think he just totally oh. whiffed by a mile. So Jen just lost. So she takes one of her, she has two elven arrows. She flips one of the cards to indicate that it's used. And so um, she only has one arrow shot left. All right, so the elf is done. That was a very bad move for her. Um, and now 
Yeah, well, you've still got your thief and your wizard and your barbarian. Well, and I can and your, this in front to protect it a little bit. Yeah. You could also use him to move out of the character as well. You know, to yeah, move or, yeah, her? basically, yeah, to kind of get her out of the way so she's not in danger. A little bit more. Protected. Okay, not the most effective. I was thinking more like, you know, a really big power thing that would have knocked her and ricocheted her back over here because, you know, she's half dead and she's still wide open. But, all right, so next up. We're going to continue to knock that elf down peg. Uh, oh, the thief is just uh, okay, so shot wild. Okay, here gonna, comes the barbarian. And now the barbarian's doing a regular shot, right? Not using your other shot. axe. Regular shot. Oh. Okay, all right. And finally the wizard will also, that's a zero now, for three. If I knock I think him into there, does it do the damage? Um, does it? I don't think so. You know, it's interesting. I don't believe the rules say anything about that. We've never tried anything like that in the games we've played. But I don't think so. Um, I, I think the wizard has to do the damage. So the wizard can uh, knock his buddy. You know, the wizard. All right, so. The, all right, so that's it. Very bad move for I Jen. Know. That was That was like zero for four. Zero for five, really. Okay, so now it is my turn. See, this orc is a little bit too close to that wall. Can't really do much of anything. I'd like the snake to get into position to do some more poison. Because poison is really awesome. You know, I could be doing one point of damage, but poison could be... I think the cards have a total value of zero to four. Maybe there's even a five in there. So depending on what gem draws, I mean, the, you know, the poison could be really pretty bad. Plus, now, see, so he could try to do a spit, which means I'd take a little arrow, but I'd have to shoot... Well, let's see. You know what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move over to the other side of the table. So, honey, could you come over here and hold the camera? Um, try not to, I've already been bumping the, don't bump the little wire because it'll make a lot of annoying noise. Okay, so, um, all right, so, I could just go for a long distance shot and try and poison the dwarf. It is a pretty long shot though. Or alternatively, I could move and then just get closer and then do a melee shot. And I could try to do it so hard that I would bounce away. But, you know, moving, the, moving him over here is really going to be um, is really going to be kind of dangerous because I would like to keep him around hmm. um, but I, I could wait a little bit on him let's see I think actually for starters I mean since Jen decided to keep the elf wide open I'm just gonna cry, keep working that elf down although it's kind of tricky uh, because the controls in the way a little bit but let's see if I can go for it all right there we go so I did a point of damage to her oh actually she didn't go off so she took a point of damage She's down to four, and uh, this guy, so I hit both of them, and this guy only has one hit point, so the spirit familiar is out. And that troll, that orc has done good work. We'll have to check that later to see if... I know, I, I hit her and then, and then bounced into... Okay. Well, all right. We'll check later. Okay. We'll annotate. So, right, this, I, there's no way I can do that. Uh, so that orc is kind of out of the picture. This orc, I could go and then keep my um, guy safe, my troll can't get to anything because Jen's hiding. My troll is a tough one. He's got two hit points and he gets to heal. So, huh. You know, so I could kind of move him down over here. I mean, heck, I could just even smash him into this so that, um, you know, he'll stop. But then the elf has a good shot at him. But that's the thing. I don't mind if he takes a hit because he can just heal himself right back up with a counter hit. So, I think I will. I'm going to kind of move him down over into this neck of the woods. Or all the way over there, alright. So, and he's done. There's nothing else he can do. Um, right. So, oh, I forgot. Orcs can do melee or they can do range. They got bows and arrows. So this guy, even though he, I can't shoot, he's just going to bring out the bow and arrow and smack that dwarf. Or not. <laughs> All right, so this guy's done. Uh, this guy's done, this guy's done. So this guy, I can move him in or I could try and do another bow and arrow shot and keep him safe at a distance. I think I'll do that. Okay, a little bit less strong. These are tiny, tiny discs. There we go. So that was a point of damage to the dwarf who is down to 11 hit points, or not the dwarf. Yeah, what well, is it? The, you know, the dwarf and barbarian, or the barbarian. I don't know if he's a dwarf or not. Um, right, so this guy's done, this guy's done. And so that leaves my snake. I'm a snake. Uh, so if I move him down there and then do a melee strike, and if a melee strike is strong enough, it could bounce him back because he's so tiny, he, he could bounce back to safety. 
or I could just go for another long range poison spit. Let's do that. All right, I'm feeling pretty good after I had that other range shot. Let's see here. In fact, uh, good aim. For, I'm going to try and aim a little bit to the right so that you know if it goes wild, hopefully, because I got three guys in my line of sight here. Hopefully, I can hit one of them, maybe even two. Or I could miss by a mile. That was pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> All right, so that was it. All my guys are done. And I think, right? Um, yep, so now it's Jen's turn. So, what are you going to do, honey pie? Run screaming. All right. Well, you know what, actually? I think that's as pretty good a place to stop as any. Let's <laughs> stop right there. And if folks want, they can hit the little I up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, or they can go to Final Thoughts, their choice. Um, but you might want to stick around because, you know, Jen, you know, she's taking a bit of a beating, but she is going to make it through this room. And once the, she's done with this, she can get to the merchant and she can start buying stuff. So if you want to see that, maybe see another room full of combat, hit the I up in the top right corner of the screen, go to the extended playthrough, or Final Thoughts, your choice in five, Four, three, two, one.